Welcome big dogs. Today I'm going to demonstrate an Excel application to determine compression failure of column structures. So when you think of column structures there's two failure modes that could occur. Basically crushing failure and buckling failure. So those are two things you got to evaluate. And you got to evaluate them independently because they really don't depend on each other. Basically one's going to fail before the others. So you got to calculate both to be confident in your design. So this is an Excel application of column buckling with a crushing failure component. So basically we have our inputs right here and we have calculations for different end conditions. And we calculate margins of safety for buckling, a buckling failure mode right here, and then we calculate margins of safety for a crushing failure mode right here. So there's two calculation steps, but before we actually get into the application of the Excel spreadsheet, it, where did this calculation come from? So I recommend the PE Mechanical Handbook. If we go up to the top here, this is the PE Mechanical Reference Handbook version 1.8. So if you haven't taken the PE exam, I highly recommend you do. You will basically expand your knowledge in engineering and become a better engineer because of it. You'll be given resources like this that you can use in your actual work environment. So if we go to the buckling section, what we have is we have basically a recipe to determine buckling for intermediate and long length columns. So this is the recipe right here. It's two pages. And if we start off at the top, basically we have calculated a radius gyration and then a slenderness ratio and then we compare a column stress determination factor right here to the slenderness ratio. If the slenderness ratio is less than the column stress determination factor determined by this equation, then it's going to be an intermediate column. And then you can therefore calculate the critical load using basically inputs like the Young's modulus, slenderness ratio, yield strength, area of the column, and determine that critical buckling load. So if this statement is not true, then it's a long column and then we just calculate our buckling load using Euler's formula. So right here. So there's also a critical buckling stress for long columns. I don't really use this, but what I do use is I use this K factor determination table right here. So we basically have six end conditions right here. So we it's got a nice table. It's got theoretical values and also recommended design values. More than likely, uh, depending on your application and what you're using, you would reach out to the vendor and get these values right here. So we have basically, we define the end conditions right here and you'll see that you'll have to determine that or use engineering judgment to uh, basically determine what your end condition is. That's really up to you, but you need to if you put it in a spreadsheet with all six, you know, you can compare those and, and play what if, right? So I highly recommend that, and that's what we do in this spreadsheet. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, okay, our inputs are going to be our area moments of inertia in the along the x-axis and the y-axis. And the reason we calculate both is we're going to use the lowest one in our calculations. So using a simple rectangular cross-section, the area moment of inertia basically is defines the resistance of an object to rotate, right? So if a rectangular column is used, our area moment of inertia is defined by the basically the width over half the height cubed over 12. So if we calculate that along the x-axis, right, we're going to have a moment of inertia that's actually higher than along the y-axis. Because if we calculate along the y-axis, right, we have a height or thickness that is going to be cubed. So this thing is likely to fail or rotate around the y-axis and not along the x-axis. So we would expect buckling failure to happen basically rotating about the y-axis, the smaller area moment of inertia. So we define those values right here, and then we put in an area, and basically you would pull these out from CAD software. You'd have to determine your elastic modulus from the material you're using, and then you would just define the column length, 
and then the yield compression strength, the ultimate compression strength. If you don't have those values, you just use the tensile strength. It's more conservative, so you'll be all right using those values for tensile if you don't have the compression values. And then I have safety factors for ultimate load and yield factor defined here, which will be provided by your company. I use 1.5 and 1.15, and then you have a compression load, basically P. What's it being loaded? What's the axial load? So the way this spreadsheet works is I have a little VBA involved, but basically you calculate the radius gyration and then the slenderness ratio. You have your end conditions defined here with the K values that you pull from the vendor or you pull from the PE mechanical handbook. You calculate this column determination factor and then from there you can determine if it's an intermediate or long column and then calculate a critical load I did this with the VBA function so that's the load that would cause buckling and then you calculate a margin of safety by comparing that to the compression load so this is a force value that you get right here for a critical load units of force so you compare it to the compression load which has units of force now that's the first failure mode buckling failure mode now you have to also calculate crushing failure mode because one could happen before the other. You don't know until you run the calcs, right? So if we just calculate a crushing failure mode, we just use our simple stress formula, the load over the area, and then we compare it to our yield strength or determine the margin of safety comparing it to our yield strength and our ultimate strength. So two margins of safety are determined here, and these are the margins of safety determined for each in condition, right? So for pinned fixed, we have this margin of safety. For free fixed, we have this margin of safety. So that's how that's done. And basically the VBA code in this spreadsheet is, is mainly used right here to determine whether it's gonna be an intermediate or long column. So if we look at that code real quick, just to be thorough, this is basically the code that calculates that we compare the column stress determination factor to the slenderness ratio if this condition is satisfied then we have an intermediate column buckling and we calculate that using this buckling formula down here from this function and then if it's else it's going to be Euler buckling we use this formula and then I also have a column determination factor I put in here you don't have to do that but I included it in here and so that's how the spreadsheet works so you can go play what if so if our column length is 30 inches it's going to change our values a little bit so our margins of safety are going to update and I'll back up a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on I change it to 50 our margins are going to get smaller right and so um, you know, you'd have to go look at the profile, pull your profiles from the CAD model to get these moments of inertia, or you can go to the vendor. So let's just go to a, uh, basically a couple websites I found. One is for Unistrut, right? It's or Strut Systems right here. So in this book, you have uh, basically technical data on the profiles that this company provides so you can see here this is one channel that they provide the B11 you can pull the moments of inertia from this it's got them in the X axis as well as the Y axis and then um, it also has radius gyration so however you, you want to set the spreadsheet up you know you'd pull from here but if we go look at buckling they define their own buckling factors you would want to use these so you would want to use these buckling factors so for pinned fixed condition they have a value of 0.8 for fixed fixed they have a value of 0.65 for free fixed 1.2 so these are those factors you could substitute you could substitute those into this spreadsheet right here similarly if we go look at T-slotted aluminum, right? They have a different set of K factors. So these are their profiles. They have the area moment of inertia defined for you. And then 
you go down here they have some K factors and I think they're similar to the ones I have defined in my spreadsheet so these are the in conditions they got six in conditions these are your K factors and you can run it that way that's how the spreadsheet works and um, I highly recommend you set this up because if you're running through any type of structural application and you need quick answers you can get them if you set up your spreadsheet in this format so I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Adios.